Hello, and thanks for tuning in to this week's Nutrition Diva podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and this week's topic came from Joe, who wrote, I just came across some steaks in the freezer, and parts of them look as if they've already been cooked. They were definitely raw when I put them in there. Is that what they call freezer burn? And are these steaks still safe to eat? Yep, it sounds like you've got some freezer-burned steaks on your hands, Joe. And yes, they are still perfectly safe to eat, assuming, of course, that they were safe when you put them in the freezer and that you haven't had any power outages that might have caused things to thaw. But the parts that look cooked probably won't taste very good once those steaks have been thawed and then cooked for real. I'd suggest thawing those steaks out and then cutting away the freezer-burned parts before you cook them. But hey, steaks don't grow on trees, so let's be sure this doesn't happen again. Our show this week received support from Squarespace, the company that makes it easy to create a unique website to showcase your work or publish your content, even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks. You can customize everything from the look and feel to settings and products using beautiful templates created by world-class designers. And there is nothing to install or patch or upgrade ever. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, use the offer code DIVA and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And also be sure to send me a link to your new website. I'd love to see what you've created. That's squarespace.com and use the offer code DIVA to save 10%. On the face of it, freezer burn seems sort of mysterious. How can raw food get cooked by sitting in the freezer? Despite appearances, however, Joe's steaks have not been partially cooked. To explain what's actually going on here, I turned to Sabrina Steerwalt, host of the Everyday Einstein podcast. Thanks for joining me, Sabrina. Thanks so much for having me. So, Sabrina, can you explain the science behind freezer burn? Well, freezer burn is the dehydration or removal of water from our frozen foods. When the water molecules in food are frozen into ice crystals, those ice crystals will leave the food's surface in favor of the dry freezer air if that food is exposed to air. The ice leaves via a process called sublimation. The molecules go directly from a solid, the ice, to a gas, water vapor. So if you've missed a spot in your saran wrap coverage or you didn't get that lid on the ice cream all the way, those foods will be more vulnerable to freezer burn. Fluctuating temperatures in your freezer can also lead to freezer burn in even the best wrapped foods. That's because warmer temperatures will cause the ice crystals to melt, and if that water drips off the surface of the food, dehydration takes place. Okay, so obviously having a package with a lot of air in it, or packaging that doesn't keep the air out, might increase the risk of freezer burn. But I'm wondering whether the water content of foods comes into play here. Vegetables are very high in water, for example, and meat is relatively low in water. So are foods that are high in water more or less susceptible to freezer burn? Well, if a food has a higher water content, it has more water to lose before freezer burn makes it inedible. So a frozen lasagna is going to be more vulnerable than, say, frozen soup, especially if it's not well-wrapped. Similarly, because meat has a lower water content than vegetables— it's more likely to get freezer burned. Given enough time, the ice crystals will eventually find their way out. So different foods will have different freezer shelf lives. Thanks for filling us in, Sabrina. And for more on the science of everyday things, be sure to check out Sabrina's Quick and Dirty Tips podcast, Everyday Einstein. Beachbody On Demand is an online fitness streaming service that gives you unlimited access to a wide variety of highly effective world-class workouts, personalized to meet your needs. It's the total package to help you become the total package this year. It's convenient and it's accessible on your computer, web-enabled TV, tablet, smartphone, or any other web-enabled device. So there's no need to go to a gym or get to a class on a specific schedule. Everything is right there on your personal device on your timetable. Plus, your annual subscription is cheaper than a gym membership. Beachbody On Demand has programs for every fitness level, and their workouts range from cardio to strength training, yoga, low impact, even dance. One of my resolutions for this year is to do more yoga. 
As I get older, it's more and more important to me to hang on to and improve my balance and my flexibility. And Beachbody On Demand is making that easier. You need to give the service a try. Right now, get a free trial membership by texting DIVA to 303030. You get full access to the entire platform for free, all the workouts and all the information. Just text DIVA to 303030. Now that we understand what causes freezer burn, we can take some steps to prevent it. Number one, you want to wrap foods tightly. By minimizing contact with air, we can also minimize the dehydration that leads to freezer burn. If you're storing foods in containers as opposed to wrapping them in something, try to match the size of the container to the contents so that you don't have a lot of extra air at the top of the container. But do remember to leave just a little bit of extra room for the contents to expand slightly when they freeze. Number two, remember that freezing is not forever. The longer foods are in the freezer, the greater the risk of freezer burn. So don't leave them in there too long. Write the date on the package when you put it in the freezer and try to keep track of your inventory. And then eat foods within three or four months of freezing them. And finally, make sure that freezer is staying cold. If the temperatures in there are fluctuating above zero degrees Fahrenheit, and that's negative 18 degrees Celsius, It can speed the movement of water out of the food and into the air in the freezer. So keep a thermometer in the freezer so that you can easily check the internal temperature of your freezer. And if it's too high, you can adjust the setting on your freezer or your refrigerator. And then also try to open and shut your freezer as quickly as possible. And that will also help minimize temperature fluctuations. My thanks again to Sabrina Steerwalt of the Everyday Einstein podcast for stopping by. If you have a question for Sabrina about science or a question for me about nutrition, you can reach us both at quickanddirtytips.com, where you'll also find a transcript of today's show, and you can sign up for the Quick and Dirty Tips newsletters while you're there. You can also reach me through the Nutrition Diva Facebook page, but as you may have heard, Facebook has recently made some big changes to what is going to be showing up in your newsfeed. If you want to continue to see the nutrition tips, research, links, videos, recipes, and listener Q&As that I post on Facebook, you can edit your newsfeed preferences to tell Facebook to include that in your feed. Or even better, subscribe to our newsletter and you'll be sure not to miss a thing. Thanks for listening and have a great week.